All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can predict if single displacement reactions will actually happen or not. The, acti the activity series, you can see it here, shows us which elements like to be in uh, the compound or in the solution more and which ones like to exist as solids more. So what we can see here, for example, gold, platinum, silver, these guys at the bottom, these are the materials that really like to exist as solids or like to exist on their own as metals. That's why stuff like gold and platinum are so valuable, not just because they're rare, but also because if they exist, they're not going to break down or form compounds by reacting with stuff like maybe the acid on your skin or something like that. That's why they make good jewelry. Alternatively, on the top, we have stuff like lithium, potassium, calcium. These are things that want to be part of, uh, they're very chemically reactive. They want to be part of um, compounds very badly. So the rule is the stuff from the top can displace this can displace the stuff from the bottom. Alternatively here we have also our halogens all listed, iodine being least reactive, the one that would like to maintain be a uh, a substance on its own, all the way up to fluorine, the one that wants to be in compound the most. So fluorine could displace chlorine or chlorine could displace bromine. And so again, the ones on the top can displace the ones on the bottom. Note also here that we have largely indicated hydrogen. Hydrogen here, since we're normally talking about solutions when we're considering these single displacement reactions, is referring to solutions that contain extra hydrogen, or as we know them, acids. So all the stuff above that hydrogen will react if they're placed in an acid, and the stuff below will not be reactive to acid. That's important for stuff like, again, gold, platinum, silver, copper, because on our skin there's always some acid. So if we're going to use something as money or jewelry or something like that, it has to be below the hydrogen for it to be able to exist on our finger without reacting with the acids on our finger. So let's just look at a couple examples here. You put a solid piece of, cal piece of calcium in a solution containing copper chloride. So since calcium is above copper on the reactivity series, we would say this reaction happens. So Ca solid, that's the metal, would react with copper to chloride to produce calcium chloride and copper. I'm assuming these are both aqueous or in solution when this is happening. So what we would see if we did this is we'd take our little gray-brown rock, or grayish rock that is calcium, we'd put it into the solution, and then we'd see the copper, which has more of a reddish color, depositing on the surface of the calcium. What we wouldn't see necessarily is that the calcium would be dissolving and going into the solution. So this reaction happens because calcium is above copper. Alternatively, you put a piece of copper into a solution containing iron nit nitrate. Here's our copper, here's our iron. Since copper is below iron, what that means then is that the iron likes to be in solution more than the copper. And as a result here, we get no reaction. We can abbreviate that to NR. So in this case, the copper likes to be a metal more than it likes to be in com more than iron, and iron likes to be in a compound more than it wants to be a metal. So in this particular situation, we're not going to get any reaction because the materials are already existing in the form that they like to exist in more. Iron's a little more reactive than copper, and so it's going to hold. It's going to keep its place in the ion of compound. We have that. Um, activity series again for the halogens as well and so it's not only cations that can replace other cations or metals that can replace other metals anions can replace other anions in solution looking at them if we can imagine a couple examples here here we have bromine gas remember bromine as a halogen has to be diatomic and it's being bubbled into a solution of sodium chloride And what we would see here is because chlorine is above bromine on the, or on the activity series, 
bro chlorine wants to be in compound more and bromine wants to stay as a gas more, bromine cannot displace chlorine then, and so we get no reaction. Alternatively, if we took the same solution and we bubbled fluorine gas into it, because fluorine is higher on the chart, that means that fluorine wants to be part of a compound more, which means fluorine can displace the bromine in that solution. Or sorry, chlorine in that solution. Uh, this, so this reaction would happen. Just for the sake of correctness, we'll balance it. And that is a balanced single displacement reaction where the fluorine is taking the place of the anion in the solution. So here's a whole bunch of reactions, and what we're going to do is we're going to go through and predict if they're going to happen, and if they do happen, what products they'd create. So magnesium reacts with copper. So here's magnesium, here's copper. Magnesium is higher, so magnesium will displace copper. If I do my crossover, that was 2 plus, that was 1 minus, so it's MgNO32. And my copper will then be able to come out of solution and form a solid. Silver being put into sodium phosphate. Here's silver. Here's sodium. So sodium is well above silver, which means sodium wants to be part of the compound more, which means silver is not able to displace the sodium in that solution, so there would be no reaction. Ammonium chloride solution has fluorine bubbled into it. The fluorine is above chlorine, and so the fluorine is able to displace the chlorine, and it forms NH4F and produces the diatomic chlorine gas, balancing if we wanted to state, say states. We can add all that stuff. But basically, fluorine is able to displace chlorine. Lithium chloride plus bromine. So again, we have an anion here, so we're looking over here. We see that bromine is below chlorine, which means it doesn't want to be in compound that much, which means it is not able to displacement. And so this is another example of no reaction. So the activity series is something we can ex we determine it experimentally by basically putting metals into solutions and seeing if the reactions happen. But what it does now that it's all being created is it tells us which atoms are able to displace other atoms when they're in solution. So for example, lithium could displace lead in a solution. The higher you are in the activity series, the more willing you are to become part of a compound or the more able you are to displace other atoms.